14 people have been killed in an avalanche in Kashmir, actually two avalanches. And unfortunately, most of these are army men who are out of duty. Now the question here is, does the army lack technology which could have been used to prevent this accident from happening? Is this technology existing today in the world? Do armies of other countries use it? And if, if it is being used, then why is it not on the priority list of the Indian Army today and the Defense Ministry today in India? So that we can save the lives of our Jawans rather than getting them killed due to environmental disasters? Or do we accept these environmental disasters as a way of life saying, oh my God, we've got plenty of people in this country, so if four or five people die in an avalanche, so what, we can always replace them with more bodies from recruits. But that's not the right way to look at these things. After all, a Jawan is a highly trained professional and an individual who is willing to lay down his life for the country. But he should lay down his life for the country, defending it, fighting enemies, rather than getting killed in an avalanche. The question is, Cal, does the technology exist to predict avalanches? Is it possible to prevent, prevent these disasters just by taking the right decisions to stay out of the way of an avalanche? Because I believe there is no such thing as an avalanche-proof tent or an avalanche-proof igloo. Because the sheer volume of snow is so much that it will crush anything in the spot, right? Yeah. There's, there's two. Now, I'm basing this from having spent 10 years in Europe, and I have a lot of friends who spend a lot of time in Europe during the winter months where avalanches and avalanche warnings are common. And I've talked to experts in the past in Europe, particularly in Switzerland, how they handle this issue. Because the Swiss Alps would probably be the rough equivalent of what you have here, although your mountains are higher. Basically, there's two kinds of avalanches. One is something that's going to happen when there's a deluge of snow that comes down. So whenever there is heavy snow, or a consistent layering of snow, you have an avalanche watch. Then, after the snowfall passes, you have a phenomenon that occurs where the snow just sits there and over time breaks away because it reaches a critical mass. There are ways to stop it. If you go through the Swiss Alps, you will see all kinds of net-like barriers that if they don't outright stop or hold back packs of snow, what happens is when the snow comes down, it tends to break the momentum, okay? So that it fragments, you don't have big chunks, or at least it kind of skips down rather than just comes down like some scene out of a Hollywood movie. Now regarding India, as a foreigner here, you know, there's no question even, even as a non-foreigner that safety is not usually the first in everybody's mind. Regarding avalanches, what they have to have is the right kind of radar that constantly probes and monitors the depth of the snowpack itself. You can do rudimentary mathematical calculations that allow you to predict the amount of tonnage, it's literally tons, of snow that is there and whether the barriers, if they exist, are strong enough to withhold that mass volume. It's basic physics. So those have to be done at all times. And before patrols are sent into areas, those reports have to be relayed to a commander, like they are in the West, or they have to be reported to base to tell the patrol officers, that because sometimes you have to go out there, this happens in Russia, that look, you're going out there, but there is an avalanche warning or an avalanche danger. And that is the way it's handled in the West, in Europe, especially in Switzerland. So what you're saying is that this technology exists? Yes, it does. And the Swiss have it? Yes. And people from Norway, Russia has it. Countries in the West which deal with snow problems all the time, they have it, it's standard, it's mandatory. Uh, even some personnel down to the soldier level are trained in it. Because in Switzerland, so is it everyone portable, goes in the army. portable technology? There is portable technology. There's also fixed uh, units that will constantly monitor this. You can even see some of the snowpack maps on the internet. But you know, Switzerland, everyone's in the army. Everyone so, has guns. So basically, if you're saying a radar sweep in this area was done, before the troops were sent in there, maybe, maybe they would have been still alive today, right? Yeah, possibly. It's just that, at the very least, the radar penetration, and snow's even easy to penetrate with radar versus solid ground, you can at least say, look, there's a danger, beware. 
Though the fact is that the danger was quite apparent because it was snowing for the last two to three days. Yes. And yes. they should have realized that critical mass will be building up. Yeah, it's not right. going to go away. And it's not going to go away. So obviously, it seems no measures were taken by the commanding officer to evacuate the area. Well, it would be good if the media asked them if they would talk and then say, okay, what steps were taken in lightness? And I'll bet you the I answer think, is I think this is, this is not a call for the media. This is a call for the defense minister. Well, it is. He should be asking these questions and he should be telling the media as to why this thing happened. But the thing is, you see, when a train accident happens and 20 people are killed, we raise questions, then the railway minister has to come up and give an explanation. Whatever accident happens in the defense sector, there's a shroud over everything and nobody wants to talk about it. I think in this case, we should have some transparency here because people, are tra highly trained Jawans should not die and officers should not die in accidents. I mean, this is no way to treat the Indian Army. You're right about that. Also, I think one or two civilians were killed. But one of the dangers is you'll have a bureaucrat say, we've taken all required or necessary precautions. And what the media does too often is say, okay, they don't then say, tell us specifically what you did. They don't drill down one level further. And they should, and I hope in this case, they do that because they need to. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.